We're about ready to, to get going here. Um, we're happy this morning to have one of our <laughs> we're happy this morning to have one of our neurology residents here, Anne Marie Collier. Uh, she's going to be talking a little bit about Paranod syndrome, and an exciting note about her is that she just got a new house in the area. So, <laughs> big big deal for Anne Marie. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. <Jill. laughs> Thank you for the opportunity to present this morning. Uh, I have a patient that was referred to Neuro Ophthalmology Clinic. Uh, she's a 21-year-old female who uh, was in rehabilitation. She had been uh, on the rehabilitation service for about uh, two months. Uh, she had been previously healthy. She was struck by a motor vehicle while cycling. Uh, she did suffer a left temporal uh, interstitial hematoma, a small injury to the sternum of the corpus callosum. An EVD had to be placed secondary to swelling, uh, extraventricular drain, uh, secondary to brain swelling at an outside hospital. She was uh, transferred. Uh, she was going to school, I believe, up in Provo, and uh, she had also been trach and peg dependent for several weeks. Uh, she again was referred to us because of uh, diplopia as well as a left lateral rectus palsy. So on her neurologic exam, one of the things that you would notice was, um, was cognitive <coughs> impairment. She uh, perseverated, had word finding difficulties. Um, she did have some left-sided facial asymmetry, flat nasolabial fold, but otherwise, except for the ophthalmologic exam, her uh, cranial nerves were normal. With motor and coordination, she did have left-sided pronated drift. Um, she had difficulties with dexterity and coordination of her hands. She did not have any uh, cerebellar signs, which was new to our center, but she, she was weak on the left. She had a wide-based unsteady gait. She could not walk on, uh, she could not walk tandem without stepping out, and she also had a positive Romberg. On her ophthalmologic exam, uh, her visual acuity was uh, 20 over 60 OD and uh, 20 over 200 OS, which is recumbent E. Um, her pupils were slow to react to accommodation and non-reactive to light um, bilaterally. She had anisocoria uh, with the left side uh, larger than the right. Her visual fields appeared to be full to center of counting, and with her extraocular movement, she was negative 5 with left abduction and uh, negative 3 with right abduction. And uh, she could not, she had par paralysis with up gaze bilaterally with no difficulty with down gaze. Um, on, uh, she did have pronounced convergence with two abusive convergence retraction nystagmus on attempted up gaze and down gaze was preserved. She had a bilateral lid retraction in primary position and enhanced in down gaze. Uh, the fundoscopic exam uh, was unremarkable with the exception of a pale disc on the left. So, oh dear. Um, you can first Jackie. Okay. Um, okay. Set up the camera. Okay. Now follow my finger with your eyes over here, over here. Follow it over here. Then do just like the last. Good. Just keep good. Okay. Just keep your eyes and then look all the way over here. Good. Okay. Now look all the way to the other side. Just with your eyes. All the way. All the way over here. Look all the way over here. So you can see when she attempts okay, to look, look up. to the look right, up, 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 when she attempts up. to look up. Look up. Good job. Okay, now look so down. Look down. Down gaze okay. was preserved. Good job. Okay, now look at my tongue. One of the things I regret okay. is look at my tongue. with this not using an OKN drum or um, filming it from the side. I'm going to just switch sides here. If you look okay, online, look you can see some of the... Uh, Thumb, Convergence and uh, retraction nystagmus is seen really better really 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 when you film them job. from the side, and you can actually thumb. see look the orbit appear mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. um, retract in the globe. Mm -hmm. Okay, just with your eyes, hold your head still. Okay, look at my thumb and look at my nose. Good job. Okay. And look at you. And you can see that she has a uh, kind of pathologic lid retraction. Again, up gaze. Uh, it's hard to appreciate because she tends to look up with her whole head when she looks up. <coughs> so um, we looked at the MRI of her uh, brain and uh, 
Uh, this is from the outside hospital. This is actually um, at the time, uh, this is about four days after her injury, the EVB had been placed. So you can see um, what I wanted to try and demonstrate here was kind of a scrolling of the EVB. Uh, so you can kind of see it penetrate here and it's starting to go through. And then it goes into the ventricle here. Then it goes through the ventricle and then into the dorsal midbrain. And I, you can see that she's had an injury here, the uh, left temporal lobe injury, but you can see right here that the EVB actually uh, penetrates in the dorsal midbrain there. And you can see it better with the sagittal. So it goes through the tectum and then the superior and inferior colliculus. And it actually appears to be resting in the inferior colliculus. So it was a very um, anatomically discrete um, placement of the EVB that led to her constellation of uh, symptoms that uh, basically uh, make paranods. And uh, so with paranods, uh, she has par paralysis of upgaze. So you have EVB. input. Oh, ex extraventricular bleeding. Yeah. Or external ventricular bleeding. So uh, impairment of upward gaze, um, eye movement for Todd and for Suge, down gaze as in our patient is preserved. Our patients can have a setting sun sign. This is frequently seen with neurosurgical patients who um, have hydrocephalus, uh, that, that they've had a shunt failure. So they'll have um, a setting sun sign where the eyes uh, deviate conically downward with an apparent down, downward gaze preference. Um, they have pupillary abnormalities uh, with near light near dissociation. The pupils dilate for distant target but constrict for near target. Um, accommodation reflex is present but light reflex is absent. Uh, this could be called a pseudo Argyle Robinson pupil. Uh, convergence retraction nystagmus. Um, again, with her, it was really hard to appreciate just because she would look up every time I had her look up and. If I could go back, I would have filmed it from this side. The eyes appear to actually jiggle um, in, the, in the globe. So when the patient attempts to look up, the attempt at up gaze causes convergence in the globe to retract within the orbit. Uh, they have the tuck ridge sign, AKA Tully sign variation T. Um, <laughs> that it's an eyelid abnormality and it's a pathological lid retraction. She looks perpetually startled um, when you look at the, the video. Uh, and then they have uh, here in horizontal saccades, excessive convergence uh, can drive, uh, con excuse me, excessive convergence drives appear uh, abducting the eyes, uh, moving slower than the adducting eyes. So you have what's called a pseudo abducens nerve palsy. So she did have an abducens nerve palsy. We're not sure if it was due to um, you know, impairment of track due to her brain injury or if she actually did have a pseudo abducens nerve palsy. Um, she didn't complain of uh, reading difficulties, but a lot of patients with a pseudo abducens nerve palsy will com um, com present complaining of difficulty reading because when they try and track to the next line as they're reading, they, they can't, they have difficulty doing it. So typical causes of uh, dorsal midbrain syndrome or um, paranoids, uh, intrinsic causes would be tumor, stroke, or myeloma lesions such as multiple sclerosis. And there are some case reports of patients actually presenting, their first presenting sign with multiple scler sclerosis is paranoid syndrome. Then you have extrinsic etiologies, which would be trauma as in our patient, uh, tumor, classically a polymyeloma, such as adrenoma or teratoma, or hydrocephalus, usually um, oculoductal stenosis is the location of the third ventricle. Interestingly, on the report for our patient, it said that the EVB catheter is terminating in the uh, cerebral aqueduct. Um, but if you look closely, it obviously bypasses the cerebral aqueduct into the tectum. So for um, prognosis and treatment, typically treatment is directed at the cause of the syndrome, um, if, it's, if it was a tumor or it was a myeloma lesion. Uh, in terms of uh, resolution of symptoms, uh, if the longer the symptoms are present, uh, the less likely they are to resolve. Um, with our particular patient, uh, we did recommend reevaluating by CT scan within in a couple of months to uh, monitor for hydro 
specialist would recommend the sleeping exercises with less eye passion three to four hours a day. Um, and she should get a follow up with us in about um, six months to see if um, she has any improvement in the dystopia as well as the adystopia that was noted on the scan. Um, and that was, that was the case. Um, these are some of the references. Um, does anyone have any questions? Thank you.